So you're going on your ride and you start to feel your old nagging shoulder pain that has come and gone and come and gone for so many years. And now it's here again. Or you finish your ride and you start to have this nagging pain, this ache that wakes you up at night. Shoulder issues can really be a plague on some of us. And there's a couple different reasons why. In this video, we're going to go over how it actually pertains to you and riding your bike and how you can make some actual changes even the next time you go out for your ride and make probably some differences and also talking about some things that we need to strengthen to help you with your shoulder issues. My name is Liz. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I'm also owner of The Ride Life, which is strength and endurance coaching for women mountain bikers. We have four different rotator cuff muscles. And these rotator cuff muscles, they come around our ball and bring the ball into the socket. That's what kind of keeps your ball up in there. We also have other muscles that support how our socket attaches back to our body. The socket is actually attached onto your shoulder blade, which most people don't actually think about or know. And it's something that you wouldn't necessarily think about until you've had an injury or if you're a PT like me. And so how we have stability for our shoulder involves a rotator cuff, but also involves our shoulder blade muscles and how they actually attach back to our body. When it comes to our actual shoulders and the knowledge of these muscles, our posture plays a role into it because obviously for here, we're not going to be able to use a lot of our shoulder blade muscles because we're more slumped forward and in. One of the things that can drastically change our riding immediately is the ability to open our chest and allow our shoulder blades to slide down our rib cage and basically support our shoulders better that way. Because if we have poor posture, I just want you to do this with me. Slump for me. Now raise your arm. Or even try to hold it up into like kind of a rider's position of holding onto the bars. It's hard, isn't it? Now I want you to relax your arms, shake it out, stand up nice and straight. We're sitting up nice and straight. And now I want you to raise your arm. It should feel so much easier to move because our shoulder blade can actually move with us. And that's what needs to happen to raise our arm. And also this should feel a lot more free because now again, our shoulder blade can move with our actual shoulder joint better as it should and it can actually support us better. So the muscles that connect from our actual shoulder blade back to our spine, they can, they're in a more optimal position to work. And we talk about muscles working in optimal positions. Think about if you're gonna like hold somebody for arm wrestling or something, you want your elbow to be about mid range here. So then you can really activate, work all these muscles here. Can you imagine trying to pull from here or trying to pull from here. Your optimal range is your mid range of the muscle. That's where it's the strongest. If we're talking more like smaller, it's where your sarcomeres, parts of your muscles that overlap itself, then they can actually grab a hold of each other better. And when you contract and shorten, they can have the best grab of each other. Because if you're too long here and trying to do it, then they're going to barely hang on and have a lesser contraction. And if they're already so shortened, then they don't have anywhere to go with that. And so having muscles in their optimal range helps them to have more strength just as is. No strength training needed at all. And so just opening your chest up would change how your shoulder functions, how your shoulder blade muscles function, and how your shoulder feels. Because if your rotator cuff muscles aren't having to overwork and they have some tendonitis issues, if your bicep that comes up here, it isn't having to overwork to helping to support your arm as it's out in this more rider stance, then it's going to feel better. And you now have other muscles supporting those that are stronger right out of the gate. And so just changing your posture to a more open chest, boobs up position then you will drastically change how your shoulders feel on and also off the bike. Now, do I want you to be in this nice, perfect position all the time? No, 
that's one, not logical, two, not possible, and three, any position can be a bad position if it's held for too long. So don't just hold that position, which I wouldn't expect you to, but it's not a goal of yours as well. Now, when it comes to other issues that might be affecting if you've had dislocations of your shoulder, we need your shoulder muscles to be the strongest possible. Also, if you have tendinitis issues in your rotator cuff muscles, one of those four muscles that bring your ball into the socket, then strengthening your shoulder blade muscles, the ones that are supporting and helping those guys out, will make a drastic change for your actual shoulder function, especially on the bike, and your ability to tolerate kind of the bumpiness that you need to tolerate back and forth, and also move your bike forward and back as needed for doing some like drops or going down more chundry technical sections. And so having that shoulder blade strength, and you can check up here for some of those shoulder exercises I have in another video, that is so important for you to help with decreasing the pain and the stress that you're putting on other areas. And even doing some activation exercises where you're just spreading your arms out and doing this type of gig, even before you go riding, will help make those guys awaken and come to life a little bit better than if you don't do those. And so it might even just be bent over in the parking lot, just bringing your arms out and bringing your shoulder blades together as you're doing that. It's a reverse fly is what you're doing. It helps tremendously in this. The other thing that can help is mobility, mobility of our upper back. So we talked about posture and how that can make a drastic change for us. But mobility in the, like rotating, extending, flexing, all of those make a drastic change for how our shoulders function. They've done several studies of if you get some manipulation or you get your upper back popped, you get it more actual mobility for your thoracic spine, which is this part of your spine where your ribs attach to, then that has a drastic effect of how your shoulders can function, how your arm is able to raise, and just overall pain. One, because of the neurological effects of moving your spine, because that's where your nerves come out. And so if it's not moving, then your nerves usually are getting slightly irritated or not functioning in their proper form. But also actual mechanics of if your ribs can shift and move because that's where they attach back to your spine and your spine can move, then now your shoulder blade, which rests on top of your ribs, can have that freedom of movement. Same idea as changing your posture, but now we're just getting into the ability to actually raise and have that chest be able to wiggle and move with us and even more segmentally down your back versus globally of here versus here. Also what happens with that is that as we improve our rotation, we improve our extension. It also takes load off of our neck. Whenever we talk about loads on necks, loads on other places, I'm talking about stress. So if I don't get movement in one spot, I'm going to try to get it from another spot. My thoracic spine usually needs mobility. It's a very stable area. My neck and my low back need, need stability because they are very unstable when it comes to that. They don't have ribs that attach to it. Think about it logically. This makes it a nice cylinder. It makes it super stable. We need to have movement there. This, it's just my spine and some other muscles that go around it, and all my plumbing and electricity that comes through here. <laughs> Fill it and breathe. And so we need more stability for our neck. And if we don't get the mobility that we need for here, then we're going to put more stress on our neck to have some more of that rotation, and that it basically makes it hurt worse. As we talked about, nerves come out of our spine. Nerves that control our muscles in our shoulders come out of our neck. And if our neck is getting stressed because we don't have mobility in our upper back, then function of our shoulders actually goes down. And our shoulders have 17 muscles that cross over them. We need our muscles to do what we want them to do and when we want them to do it. 
based on the direction from our brain, and that direction is sent via the nerves. And so if our nerves aren't delivering the game, it's like a game of telephone gone wrong. I want you to fire this muscle for this long, this long, muscle for this long, this long, muscle for this long, and at these percentage rates. Well, all of that gets now jumbled up and it doesn't get delivered. Usually it's that it's less strength and it's a delayed reaction is what happens whenever your nerves are irritated. And so making your neck feel so much better will drastically help your shoulders. And that usually comes in as part of it for our upper back having the mobility that we need. And so check out this for some upper back mobility exercises. And I hope that this is super helpful for you so you can ride your bike and feel so much better. There was a girl that was just, that was in my membership. She's, I think she was in there for just even two weeks. And she said this, she's still in there. And she said that she went on her first ride and didn't have any shoulder pain afterwards, which is huge because when you have pain in doing something, it makes it one less fun. And two, you're not able to challenge yourself to do other things that you want to do in that sport. And so doing these extra things can drastically change your, what you can do and what you want to do out on the trail. Bye, y'all.